Well, good morning, YouTube. It's uh, Wednesday morning. Thought I'd just come to you again today, right after New Tool Tuesday. What I wanted to show you today is uh, kind of my, I don't really know what you call it, my winter preparation, my things I keep with me in the wintertime at all times. Um, of course, I just started this, this year um, doing this. I've always over the years had things that was kind of ready in case I needed them because you never know in inclement weather uh, what you may get into. Um, so I just, I keep these items back and forth with me all the time. Uh, Jason, you see here, caulking. He calls this my man purse because I've got it with me all the time and I pack it in and pack it out. Of course, it is called a pack out system, but I pack it in a lot of times. Um, this stays with me all the time. Uh, it comes on the job. Then tonight, when we get ready to go home, I make sure all the stuff's back in it. I take it home, take it inside the house. And these things that I'm gonna show you, uh, they stay with me all the time in the winter. So kind of what I've got here is uh, I keep my 12 volt Milwaukee impact driver with me all the time. I have the little 12 volt, I've had this for years, a 12 volt DeWalt um, turtle light, I don't know what you want to call it, but I keep that in here. It's great in small places. Um, it does have a little thing here that helps it to, uh, I think it sits up, yeah. You gotta just smack, push it down harder. Or it'll hang up on that. It's got a belt clip if you want it. Um, let me set this back here as we go through it. I keep this little Ryobi with me. This is good for light jobs. And I tell you, this has been one of the most remarkable tools that I have ever bought. I have had this thing for years. Uh, it has a self-contained battery in it, four volt. I have lost it. I have found it. It has stayed on the trailer through hot weather, cold weather. It holds a charge, unbelievable. And it is just remarkable. The thing that I like about it is doing light jobs. It has a really good clutch on it. It's got a really good light clutch. I can make it, I uh, can't, okay, I ain't got a bit in it to make it activate. I use it a lot on electrical stuff. And you know, putting wall plates in, face plates on, you gotta be careful about cracking them. This has a really light clutch in it and it'll just put the screw right in, stop. Um, it also has uh, to put it on uh, drill, you know, where you wanna lock it down. But I mainly just use this for very light jobs, plastic stuff that you could tear up something. Remarkable tool right there all right uh i have this in here probably overkill but you know the dewalt it's got several bits in it here i've got uh, and i'll show you why it's overkill in just a second i've got the milwaukee drill bits with me and the reason i say that that's probably overkill is right here is all kinds of bits and things right here I've got some counter seeking bits here. I've got several of uh, these. What do you call these things, Jason? What? I can't think of a name for them. Hex bits. Hex bits. Couldn't think of that. I got some just little zip ties in here. I've got a piece of black tape, you know, a roll of black tape. These are for removing door handles. If I can get them out of here. Uh, right here. Well. I've got another one. Those are for removing door handles. You know, they've got a little place you poke a pin in and you can pull the door handle off. I keep those in there. I've got a six amp hour battery, a four amp hour battery. I usually have another six amp hour battery in here, but Jason's got it on the caulk gun. Uh, the two amp hour batteries, I got a couple of them in here. I keep a couple of stud finders because I never know when, you know, I may get a call to go to a house and need to find a stud or whatever. So I keep a couple of those. I got 
power of pliers in here, stay down in the bottom. And all of this has pretty much got its place to go because uh, it's a tight fit in this. I have some, uh, they're made for wiring, you know, they're strippers, cutters, whatever. Same thing, these are needle nose, those are flat nose. Uh, vice grips like this. I've got an electrical checker, a pencil, small little screwdriver, and uh, then this box has a tape measure in it. I've got a black marker, a headlamp. This uh, tool right here is for, let me see if it'll come on. I believe that it got down against something run the battery down. I'll get a battery for it, but that's a gas leak checker. Okay, here it is. It's working. I don't know if it'll pick up the lights. Um, but this, you take it, and wherever you think you might have a gas leak, you run this around. It has an, an audible tone. It's ready now because the green light, it was doing a self-check. But it'll come on to caution, and red is means it's smelling gas, you know, extremely. Yellow is, could be. So I keep this in here. I uh, went and got two more batteries. I guess something got against it and held it on. But uh, run the batteries down. But anyway, I keep that with me because that is handy to have. I do from time to time have people call me, say, hey, I think I smell gas. And I take this and you can run that around all your fittings and see if you smell gas or if there is gas. I keep this heat gun with me, the Milwaukee 18 volt heat gun. And then here is all the fittings for it. Uh, in here that all the different fittings right there. Okay, there it is, everything packed back in it, lid will close. Just want to say one more time, remarkable little tool right there. The battery stays up on this, I mean forever. And it is just a great little screwdriver. I keep this Milwaukee 12 volt light with me all the time. And I keep the DeWalt charging power station with me all the time. Keep it just like this. And I keep the cord with me that plugs it up or you can use this to plug in over to the side. You know, if you need to have a little extension to go to whatever you're gonna power. Uh, I've got an LED light inside my trailer I use this for. Uh, I just keep it with me all the time in case I'm somewhere and I need power. Uh, this kind of power. What I brought you out here to show you is this. Uh, you see propane tank. You see the DeWalt propane heater right back up under there. There's also another, I uh, can't get to it. There's another propane tank back up under there. And why I took you out there in the trailer to show you the DeWalt forced air heater, the two propane tanks is this. Is I've got two large forced air heaters. You know, you fill them up with kerosene. And that's what I've used in the past if I had frozen pipes and you've got a crawl space and you need to tuck it, you know, under the house, blowing under the house to thaw the pipes out. One of the things that I run into with them is they're on wheels and they set up high. Sometimes the crawl space is down lower and we have to put blocks under the um, forced air heater to tilt it up, to get it to blowing under the house. Um, they're very heavy to handle, put them in a truck, tote them. So that's going to be a lot lighter if I run into that problem. I don't have it a lot, but I want to be prepared. If somebody calls me and says, hey, my pipes are froze, I can take that, put it blowing under the crawl space. It's very light. You put a 20 volt battery on it to power it. You just got a propane tank to carry in that tank and the uh, actual heater. So those are things that's my winter time ready. I had a guy, uh, his name on YouTube is V Matt, and he watched the video where we were laying this shawl flooring. This is the one that I gave $1.58 a square foot for. And I had trouble laying it. It is thin, it doesn't cut as easy. Uh, it's, it's more brittle. It just didn't have the flex to it. The pad is a lot thinner. 
it's it's just harder. And when you tried to cut it with a utility knife, it just didn't want to score it, didn't want to cut it. <coughs> when you broke it, it wanted to chip. You had trouble putting it together, trying to get it together. You had to kind of hammer it together. And it just didn't go to good, good, it didn't go together good. So I'm not going to use this anymore, that $1.58. This is the one that if you go back, uh, and I'll put a link in this to this video of where I laid this in my daughter's bathroom. This was um, close to $3 a square foot. It was two something in the upper twos. It's very flexible, bends easy. The padding is thicker on it. This, you could score it with a utility knife, break it, you know, it break over, it wouldn't chip. It snapped together very easy. And so it's worth giving a little bit more money for this than buying the $1.58. Now they've got the $1.58, you know, in this color and they've got it in this color, but I'm not gonna do that anymore. It, it was just too hard to snap together. It's brittle. Um, I, I just didn't like it. Uh, I think it's worth giving a dollar more per square foot to get a little bit better flooring, a little thicker. So that's what I'm going to go to. I wanted to kind of address that with Matt. Uh, but I'll put the link down in the description of where we laid this. I'll put the link down in the description to where we laid this. And you'll see the kind of the difference in that maybe. Uh, just wanted to bring you that. Wanted to give you uh, my wintertime stuff I've got with me. Plus I told Matt I would uh, talk a little bit about that flooring. Guys, I appreciate you watching. As always, thank you for all your kind comments. Uh, just like yesterday, I uploaded the new Tool Tuesday, and all of you are just so kind, and I appreciate that. Um, and you just being so graceful to me. Jason, you want to tell them bye? Bye, you two. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching. God bless all of you. Thank you for being so kind to us. And we'll see you on the next video. We may have, uh, probably going to have a old tool Thursday tomorrow coming at you. Jason brought one of his tools he wants to show you. So be looking for that. Thank you, guys.